Hi, my name is Pastor Stephanie Lape. I am at Cross and Crown Lutheran Church in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Many people reach out to pastors because they want to know pastors' views on certain biblical passages. Uh, you're welcome to do that if you ever want to know my thoughts on different parts of the Bible. But I thought it would be interesting to do a few videos since I try to do a video every week that's just on a on a topic people might be interested in, you know, other than worship and Bible study on Sundays. Um, but I try to do one uh, about kind of like current events and things like that. But I've I've talked about this quarantine so very much, and uh, and I still get people calling and asking about biblical questions. And so I thought, you know, it might be a good idea to to talk about the Bible some in some of these uh, weekly videos. Um, but I cannot put all of this into one video because it would be a very long video. So I thought that I'd do uh, maybe three, maybe four videos in the next few weeks talking about some of the things that I think are really helpful when understanding the Bible. Uh, and if and if you're not a seminarian or a pastor, you're not really expected to know this particular stuff. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't really say on the front of a Bible exactly how to read it. Um, so it just looks like a book, like a novel. And then sometimes people say, well, I want to read this in a year. And then they got they start with Genesis, the first book of the Bible, and they get super bogged down by about the second or third or fourth books of the Bible. And it's hard to get through all 66 books. So uh, I, I thought I'd explain some things and, and maybe uh, this will be helpful for you. So this first video today, uh, I want to talk about... Um, three basic, basic ways to read the Bible. And, uh, you know, this Bible came together over many, many centuries. It was first passed down through just storytelling, the oral tradition. And then in, um, in the 300s, a council of Nicaea was convened where they decided a particular bishop stepped forward with his thought about what the 27 books would be that would be good for the New Testament. And so that is still our 27 books of the New Testament today. Um, everything that we call Old Testament was a Jewish text first, and the Jewish people passed down all these stories. And what we call the New Testament, which is in the second half of the Bible, actually it's less than half, um, but the second part of the Bible we call the New Testament, and that is about the stories of Jesus and the early church, and then what is to come. So the three basic things that I think are the most important things to remember when reading the Bible and, uh, oh, let me even tell you a couple of things before that. First of all, read any translation you want. They are all, unless it's called an interpretation, like the Message Bible is not really a translation, it's an interpretation. But other than that, if it's a translation, they are all translated straight from the Greek and Hebrew. Um, yes, some translations are more accurate than others, but the most important thing is that you read the one that appeals to you. It's kind of like exercise. The best exercise is the one that you'll do. So too, the best version of the Bible is the one that you'll actually read. So if you love the King James Version with all the flowery language, read it. If you don't like it and don't relate to that because it sounds like Shakespeare or something, then read another one, the New International Version, or this is the New Revised Standard Version, which I really like. So I read several of them, and I think that they're all really good, and the most important thing is that you actually pick it up and read it. Um, also, don't read a whole lot at one time. You're not trying to just get through it like you might a Charles Dickens novel or something. You're taking in a little bit and, and really milking it for the meaning that it has for you. Okay, so the three basic things to remember when reading the Bible. The three ways to read the Bible are this, and I'm going to hold it up so you can see my Bible. You look for the world in the text. So literally, what does the text actually literally say. In our denomination in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, we are not literalists most of the time. Sometimes we take things very literally, like when Jesus says to love one another, that's very literally. I'm kind of a fundamentalist about that. Um, and, and I'll talk later on about how to decide what to take literally and what not to take literally and how do you understand and do you take it all seriously? Do you cherry pick? That's a whole other talk. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> but generally, we are not literalists about the Bible. Um, there's a lot more to explore than just literally what the text says. But you have to start there. You have to just read it and say, okay, what is it actually saying? And, and we, we refer to that as the world within the text. Okay, then secondly, you look for, I'm going to hold this up here so you can see it, the world behind the text. And what I mean by that is, what is the historical context in which the Bible was written? 
And researchers and archaeologists and anthropologists and all kinds of people contribute to the worldwide knowledge that we now have of the world behind the text. What was it like in ancient times? I mean, it matters. It matters how women were treated, first of all. It matters how, um, you know, when you're debating the issues of uh, what does Paul mean about homosexuality? Actually, he doesn't say that word, but, you know, two, two males lying together or whatever. What does that actually mean in the historical context that we're talking about? Because if we're just going to think about it in today's context, like what does it mean in 21st century America, we will absolutely get it wrong about what Paul was trying to say in this instance. So we want to know the world behind the text, and we rely on scholars to research this stuff. And we, in our denomination, and in many denominations, we call that historical criticism. Now, by criticism, it doesn't mean criticizing like how we use the word criticize to put somebody down. It just means to research it and understand it and talk about it historically. So that's why our pastors are very trained in this, and it takes many years to go through seminary, because we're learning lots and lots and lots and lots of research. And we learn the language is Greek and Hebrew, so we can read the original text, and we try to understand the world that this thing came out of. It makes a difference. So if I just got some correspondence course, you know, degree... Uh, that took a few months in order to then go start preaching, I probably wouldn't have learned what I needed to about historical criticism. And historical criticism matters. It really, really does. Okay, so we talked about the world in the text or of the text. I'm trying to hold this very floppy Bible here. And then the world behind the text, all the historical criticism. But at the end of the day, nobody, no researcher, no scholar, no pastor, no bishop, no theologian can step back into that world behind the text. So we have to have a sense of humility about us that we we can know a lot about what it's like, like in Jesus's day, first century Palestine. We can know a lot through archaeological evidence, through reading the original text, through understanding the culture, through studying those times. But we can't know everything because we're not there. We don't have a videotape. We cannot completely leave our own 21st century perspective. So... We can kind of be experts, but not really, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so then the third world is this, the world in front of the text. And that means, how does the text talk to my heart or yours? When you're holding your Bible here and you're reading it, you're reading the world in the text, like literally, what does it say? You're thinking about whatever it is that you happen to know about the world behind the text. And we can all be students of that for a lifetime, learning a little bit more all the time. But where you and I and everybody, where we are experts, totally, is the world in front of the text. How does that speak to me, my heart, right now? When you think about it that way, you don't need to know everything about first century Palestine or whatever we're talking about. So that holding all three of those, that it's important to know all three of those, it's not like we're going to throw any of them away. It's important to know literally the text as much as we can about the world behind the text, but that's a lifetime study of that, including myself. I'll study it for my whole life. What is What was that world back then and there? But right now, we can know and be experts on the world in front of the text. How is God speaking through this text today to me? The Holy Spirit uses this. This is a window through which we can see God. It's like a portal. And God will come through it. This is not God. We don't worship the Bible. That would be idolatry. We only worship God. But God uses this to speak to us. So... If you're just starting out reading the Bible, as I know, I talked to a couple people lately that are pretty new at this, and they've asked me, you know, where do I start? Um, I would recommend not starting at Genesis and then going to Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. I mean, you're going to get bogged down. Um, I suggest you start with the Psalms, and here's why. If you open up the Psalms, which is approximately in the middle of your Christian Bible, if you open up the Psalms, those are prayers that at least David, but maybe even more people, prayed and sung and wrote to God. They express joy, uh, praise, celebration, but they also express some of the difficult emotions like anger, pain, sorrow, 
you know, saying things like, where are you, God? I feel like you've abandoned me. They're just real. They're raw. They're honest. And they're things you're going to understand immediately. So if you had no biblical knowledge whatsoever, and if you just picked up the Bible for the first time ever, and you read one psalm, like one psalm per day, and then you said this, okay, God, I'm going to read what's literally in the text, the world in the text. I know very little about the world behind the text, but I know me. I'm, I'm me. I'm kind of the expert of me. And so speak to me, please, through that text to my heart. You're going to get something out of this and you're going to get it right away. So as you're traveling this journey of life and you're learning more and more in sermons and Bible studies in your own reading about the world behind the text, you today know how God's talking to you. And that's going to make your spiritual life and your life with the Bible so much more exciting when you focus on how is God talking directly to your heart today. And what does God want you to know? How does God want you to feel more peace and love and guidance? God will lead you in your very practical concerns in your everyday life. God will lead you to the next step God wants you to take and, and how to feel about it and how to feel strengthened and how to feel confident and how to feel peaceful and how to feel joyful and how to be able to give more in ways that will benefit the world and yourself. God will lead you through this when you realize that you and God are having a conversation in that world in front of the text. And you can start that right now. Every person can do that. Next week, I'm going to do another video and we're going to do more and more, but they're all really simple tips about how to understand the Bible. And hopefully that'll make this really come alive for you and be much easier to understand. I know this is a super complicated book, but these tools really will help you. And these are things that I've learned along the way and that I use every day. So please subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Uh, click the thumbs up if you like it. That helps our algorithm. And then click the little bell so that you can be notified when a new video comes out. And in the next three or four videos, you'll get a lot of tools uh, that'll help you understand how to get this, <laughs> how to understand this and how to work with it for your whole life. Okay, have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.